Brazil has long been considered the greatest footballing nation. The only one with so many great legends that we might not have the whole video to list them all, but let's name a few. Pele, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo Nazario, Roberto Carlos, Cafu. But under the radar, there has always been one player who is rarely mentioned among the greats. His name is Rivaldo the man with an instrumental role in 2002, without whom Brazil would not have won five World Cups. But why is that? Why is he so overlooked and seemingly lacking that legendary status? We will find out today, so stay tuned till the end. Yes, it is a very intriguing question indeed, especially when you consider Rivaldo's achievements. World Cup, Ballon d'Or, Champions League. Not many great players have all three in their trophy case. But he has always been overshadowed by Ronaldo and Ronaldinho, even though he was arguably Brazil's most influential player during their last World Cup triumph. Yes, that probably sounded crazy, as Ronaldo has always been described by the media as the man who brought the trophy to Brazil in 2002. But by the end of this video, we might be able to convince you that this is not exactly the case. However, let's start from the very beginning, the early years of Ronaldo's difficult childhood. He was born on the 19th of April 1972 in the city of Recife. Yes, this is not a very well-known fact, but his birthplace actually foreshadowed his difficulties in the professional game. As you may have noticed, a huge number of Brazilian legends were born in the south of the country. Ronaldo in Rio de Janeiro, Ronaldinho in Porto Alegre, Neymar in Sao Paulo, three of the biggest cities in southern Brazil. Well, Rivaldo wasn't so lucky is he was born some 1.3 thousand miles away in the north, where football isn't a part of life as it is in the south. It was definitely an obstacle to overcome for Rivaldo, and add in the poverty in which he and his family lived in Recife, you wouldn't be far off in saying that it's a miracle that he became the player we all know. Football, however, was the one thing that got him out of the tough conditions, thanks of course to his luck in being noticed in that part of Brazil. On top of that, he had to endure another hard time before he turned 18, as his father was killed in a road accident in 1989. But this only spurred Rivaldo on to pursue his dream, and a year later, he signed his first professional contract with Santa Cruz. Over the next three years, Rivaldo couldn't establish himself as a regular player at any team, playing for Santa Cruz, the Sao Paulo-based club of Moji Murim, and Corinthians on loan for the second half of the 1993-94 season. He had a good campaign in the Brazilian top flight, which was more than enough for Palmeiras to buy him in the summer of 1994. It was at Palmeiras that Rivaldo finally came into his own, scoring 14 goals in just 30 appearances over two seasons. Yes, these may not look like some extraordinary stats, but it seems that even in the early years of his career, he was underestimated by coaches and teammates, not giving him enough playing time. By the end of his spell at Brazil's most successful club, he had won the league title in 1994 and the Campeonato Paulista in 1996. Before the 1996 Olympic Games, where Rivaldo was tipped to be one of the stars, Italian club Parma announced that they had signed the Brazilian technician. Once the tournament was over, however, Rivaldo abandoned Parma for Spanish side Deportivo La Corona, who were enjoying their most successful period. The year before, they had won their first two major trophies, the Copa del Rey and the Spanish Super Cup. It was the perfect club for Rivaldo at this stage in his development. Not a massive side, but a team with relatively high ambitions, where the Brazilian could be a regular starter. Well, Rivaldo made the most of his opportunity, finishing the La Liga campaign in the top four goalscorers with 21 in 41 appearances, laying the foundations for his team's third place finish and qualification for the Champions League. Interestingly, it wasn't Rivaldo who was the biggest breakthrough player of that season, despite putting up some impressive figures for a player in his first year in Europe. In fact, it was R9, who was at Barcelona at the same time, who scored 13 goals more than Rivaldo. In the summer of 1997, however, Ronaldo moved to Inter, where he would go on to win that year's Ballon d'Or, while Rivaldo arrived at the Camp Nou as his replacement. Indeed, this is perhaps one of the greatest disappointments for Barcelona fans. The fact that the club failed to bring together the two best Brazilian strikers of the time in what would have been not only one of the greatest duos in history, but one of the most dangerous attacks in the world, with Risto Stoikov, Luis Figo, Ronaldo and Rivaldo. Well, his first season was his most successful in terms of silverware. He won the domestic double of La Liga and the Copa del Rey, as well as the European Super Cup against Borussia Dortmund in March 1998, 
In all, he scored 28 goals in 51 games in 1997-98, starting his Barca career on a very, very high note. Rivaldo then enjoyed the most prolific season of his five years at the Camp Nou, bagging a staggering 47 goal involvements in all competitions. Yes, 1998-99 was another memorable season for him, even if it wasn't as successful as his first. That season also saw the emergence of Barca's brilliant attacking trio of Figo, Cloyverts and Rivaldo, one of the best in the world for two seasons before the Portuguese winger left for arch-rivals Real Madrid in 2000. In 1998-99, Barcelona defended their La Liga title, and it was Rivaldo who played the biggest part in their success, winning the most prestigious individual award, the Ballon d'Or, at the end of 1999. It is a prize that will always remain close to the hearts of the Barcelona faithful, having been won on the club's 100th anniversary. And if we must be precise about which tournament sealed the Ballon d'Or for Rivaldo in 1999, it was undoubtedly the Copa America. The Barcelona man was named the player of the tournament after scoring five goals, four of which came in the knockout stages, including two in the 3-0 win over Uruguay in the final. He didn't win any more trophies with the Catalans until the end of his time at Barcelona, as arch-rivals Real Madrid undertook a massive rebuild in 2000, following the arrival of new president Florentino Perez. However, his partnership with Clivert flourished after Figo's departure, with the pair combining for 59 goals in 1999-2000, 77 in 2000-2001, and 65 in 2001-2. Between the memorable 1998-99 season and his departure in the summer of 2002, Rivaldo's finest moment with Barcelona was undoubtedly his extraordinary hat-trick against Valencia in the second round of the 2000-2001 season, described by many as the greatest in history. His first goal was a trademark free kick that curled into the bottom right corner. For his second memorable goal, he tricked a Valencia player with a feint before unleashing a powerful shot into the bottom left corner and into the net. What can we say about the third though? Considered the best of his career, Rivaldo controlled the ball with his chest from the edge of the 18-yard box before unleashing a bicycle kick at the near post. A truly magnificent moment in his career. Rivaldo's words after the game were also those of a true leader and team legend. What happened tonight was incredible. I dedicate the winning goal to all the players who have fought so hard all season, and to all the fans who have suffered so much. I'm delighted to have made them happy with my goals. The hat-trick secured Barcelona's place in next season's Champions League after a very unconvincing 2000-2001 campaign. As for the tournament that brought him the greatest joy of his career, the 2002 World Cup, well, it can definitely be said that Rivaldo once again showed his immense class. His start to the competition was spectacular, to say the least, scoring in each of the first five games. An 87th minute winner against Turkey in a 2-1 win and two goals in each of the victories over China and Costa Rica. At that moment, Rivaldo had already scored three goals in the group stage, but it was in the knockout rounds that he really came into his own. A spectacular long-range opener in the round of 16 against Belgium, which ended 2-0. A very, very important equaliser in the quarter-final against England, after the three Lions had taken the lead through Michael Owen. The quarter-final was undoubtedly Brazil's toughest match of the tournament, and it was Rivaldo who made it happen with a brilliant display that earned him the Man of the Match honours. Yes, from then on, the stage was open for R9, who scored all three of Brazil's goals in the final, one against Turkey and two against Germany in the final. But they wouldn't have happened without the brilliance of Rivaldo, who was undoubtedly Brazil's player of the tournament before the semi-finals. And let's not forget that the 1999 Ballon d'Or winner was instrumental in both of R9's goals in the final. In the first, Rivaldo's shot from outside the area was saved by goalkeeper Oliver Kahn, but his save didn't help, as Ronaldo sneaked in and slotted the ball into the empty net. On the second goal, Cleberson crossed from the wing, and Rivaldo used his footballing IQ to brilliantly slip the ball through for Ronaldo to fire into Kahn's right-hand corner. The chemistry between the two attackers was astonishing, and to be honest, this particular goal was a prime example of the excellent understanding between Brazil's players throughout the tournament, which earned them their fifth World Cup. Unfortunately for Rivaldo, the end of the 2002 World Cup marked the end of his best form. 
Yes, he moved to Milan the following season and even won the Champions League, but his impact was insignificant. 30 minutes in seven games in Europe was far from what he was used to, especially for a player who had won the World Cup just a few months earlier. All in all, his time in Italy was hardly a positive one, with only 22 appearances and five goals to his name. And that was our story on one of the most underrated Brazilian superstars in history. If you liked it, smash the like button and click subscribe for more similar content. What do you think? Do you believe Ronaldo deserved more recognition for his wonderful performances at the 2002 World Cup? Share your thoughts below. Now, catch you in the next one and see you on the pitch.